Hello everyone, I am back, and today I'm going to be showing you a more in-depth look at how to use the CHDK firmware extension on your Canon PowerShot camera. I have made a video about this earlier, but I definitely missed quite a few things about the hack. So this is going to be a multi-part series highlighting each thing that you can do with CHDK. So I will start by loading up CHDK on the Canon PowerShot A720 and this is CHDK version 1.1.0 and it is generally identical throughout all camera lines like whether it's a big SX40 or a little tiny point and shoot like this one so what I show you should apply to nearly all your, your cameras. So I put it into playback mode and I power it up and go to menu and I found that an easy way to do this is to just push the up button so that you go all the way to the bottom of the menu to firm update and then you scroll over and hit OK and this is the first time you will load CHDK and that splash screen will appear. So now we can go into shooting mode and you can see that lovely white wall and the alt button on this camera is this button the print button but for a SX40 it would be the shortcut button which is in the upper left corner of your camera up here so we pushed the alt button and you can see on the screen now that there is indeed a alt thing <laughs> So you hit Alt, and then you go hit the Menu button, and you see this menu, and in that menu, we will start with Extra Photo Operations. So, the Disable Overrides section, I will get to that later, but the Override Shutter Speed Value is probably one of the most handy things here, because you can make it so that you have a shutter speed of down to 1 100,000th of a second which is really handy if you want to get some frozen motion pictures of birds or sports or anything similar to that if you have enough light to do so and you can also if I scroll over have a shutter speed value of a very long time in this one it only goes up to 64 seconds but with the SX40 you can go all the way up to I believe 200 and no 2054 seconds which is like about 10 minutes I wouldn't recommend using that because they're not really designed to do that but you can definitely push it to 64 or 200 seconds easily enough but to activate that 64 seconds you have to make sure that the factor the value factor is 1 so that it's 64 times 1 which is 64 seconds and you can also change how you scroll through the shutter speed because you see right now it's 64 then 50 then 40.3 those are all uh, exposure value steps but I could change it so that it's a factor so I could just go like 1 2 3 4 and change it with that so it's 7 times 100 so then that would be 700 seconds but I would only use that for long exposures because as you can see, there isn't a value that is less than 1, or, oh, yep, there is. So you can do that. So you can have it be like 1 10,000th or 1 1,000th, but I prefer just to use EV step because it is a bit easier to use. And you can also override the aperture value. So you can have it be all the way down to a very tight 1, 16, 1 over 16 aperture value which is handy for landscapes if you want the most depth of field possible and also if you want to make a long exposure of say a waterfall and it's too bright because as you know with manual mode in these cameras you can only go to f8 which can seem quite limiting so this will keep you from being restrained to that. So I'll just go back into the extra photo operations menu. So we were here, 
I still have not a clue what override subject distance value is because I can't change that. But my only guess would be that it's how far away you're focusing in your camera. Here's your override ISO value, which you would use if you are making an exposure longer than one second in manual mode on a Canon SX40 because it has that limitation. So if you wanted ISO 400, you could disable all these other overrides and just have this be 4 in the value factor of 100, so it's 4 times 100. So then you could do a 15 second exposure at f2.7 with ISO 400. Here you can have a bracketing option, which is where it takes three pictures, one in the middle, one above, and one below. You can do that with a shutter speed value, an aperture value, with a focus value, and an ISO value. And you can have it be plus and minus, just minus, or just plus. And it can also clear the bracket values at start, so it will just reset everything to this whenever you reset your camera, which I would recommend doing because you don't want your camera to be freaking out if you take a picture just to do take one picture. And you could also add a suffix to these so you could separate them from the other pictures you take. You can also create a custom ISO with a range and shutter speed value. Although I find that this isn't all that useful because I found that the auto ISO in most Canon cameras is quite usable. Here is an option that I would highly recommend using, clear override values at start. So say that you were taking a 300 second exposure and you took that picture and then you turned off your camera. If this wasn't checked, the next time you boot up CHDK and take a picture, you would do another 300 second exposure, which would probably take up a long time and you might miss the shot. So I would clear override values at start. Here you can change the exposure value if your camera doesn't have the option to do so. And you can also force a manual flash. And here you have flash power of minimum, medium, and as high as it can go. But I don't need that because this camera does have manual flash, as does the SX40. So that is about it for the extra photo operations. This is probably the most useful section in CHDK, that and also the RAW. So, in the next video, which will be on a link in the screen that is somewhere, I will be showing you the video parameters and probably also the RAW, because the video parameters isn't as in-depth as extra photo operations. So, this has been me, Lord 10 explaining to you part one of how to use CHDK very effectively. So I will see you all next time. And if you liked the video, please do like the video. I will see you next time.